Hey guys, in this quick video, we're going to discuss some of the CSS units of measurement that confuse new developers and designers, and that's REM, M, VH, and VW, okay? But we're mostly going to focus on REM and M. Now, for a long time, we used fixed pixels or PX units, which is very simple to understand. 12 pixels is always 12 pixels no matter what. Well, REM and M are relative, um, and the difference between the two is what they're relative to. Okay, now they're both relative to font sizes, but M is always, rel I'm sorry, REM is always relative to the root element, which is the HTML element, and then M units are relative to their parent element, okay, or the element that the child is used by. So let me show you exactly what I mean, because obviously that, that can be kind of confusing, what I just said. So I, what I have here is an index HTML file, and in the body, all I have is a div with the class of box, and then a paragraph inside of it with some dummy text. All right, and then I have it linked to a style sheet, which I don't have anything in yet. All right, and you're over here, you're seeing the, the, the HTML file, and you're also seeing uh, my Google Chrome tools. Now, what I wanna do here is I want to grab this paragraph, so we're just gonna put in a P selector for our paragraph, and we're gonna set the font size to one rem all right and we're going to save that now we're not going to see any difference because the default font size is 16 pixels for the html element or for the page now if we go over here in our chrome tools and actually you know what, i can make this smaller make this bigger okay so if we go over to our chrome tools here and we go on the paragraph that we just created which is right here and down here where our styles are, we can click on computed and you can see that the font size is actually 16 pixels. Okay, so the browser takes that one rem and it converts it into pixels. Now, this is relative to the HTML font size. Okay, so right here, this HTML tag, if we click on that, um, it's relative to that font size, which by default is 16 pixels. Now, What's cool about REM is that the user can actually control the size of the font from their browser settings. So if we go to, uh, let's see, where is it? Settings, and we go down to appearance, and we go to font size, you'll see that we have medium recommended is the selected. But if I go and change it to large, you'll see that the font actually got bigger. Okay, if we change it to very large, it gets bigger. If this was just regular pixels, like let's say 16 pixels and save, that has no effect. So that's that's one reason alone to use REM is that the user can actually control, uh, can control the font size like that. So it's great for accessibility, people that have, you know, vis uh, vision disabilities and so on. All right, so let's just put that back to medium. So that that's one reason to use REM. Now, like I said, this is this is 16 pixels by default. Now you can, of course, change the HTML uh, font size. So if we say font size for HTML 10 pixels and save, this is going to go down to 10 pixels. Okay, one rem is going to equal whatever the font size is here. Now, if I were to change this to two rems, this is now this is a multiplier. So it's going to take the font size and it's going to multiply it by two. So if I save that, you can see down here, if I hover over the paragraph and we go to computed, the font size is now 20 pixels because it's double what the the core HTML font size is. Now, of course, you can use um, decimals here as well. So if we say like 1.5 rem, and save now you can see that it's 15 pixels all right if we were to say let's say 6 rem you can probably guess what that's going to be it's going to be 60 okay it's going to multiply this by 6 okay so hopefully that makes sense now i'm going to set this back to 1 rem and i'm going to just get rid of that so it's back to its original 16 pixels now you don't you can use rem on more than just the font size so and you should so let's go ahead and let's put a border in here and we'll say let's just put one rem to begin with and see what that gives us and we'll say black solid 
So by default, one rem, of course, is going to be 16 pixels because that's that's the root elements pixel size for the font. Uh, but what we would want to do here is take a percentage of that. So let's say 0.1 rem. And then if we look over here, you'll see that the border size is now uh, 1.5 something pixels. OK, so let's add some padding here. So padding. So padding, I'm actually going to set to the same as the font, which is going to be one rem, which is going to be 16 pixels. All right. But of course, you can change that if you want. If you wanted to do like uh, 0.5 rem, you can see that the border is now uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not the border of padding is now eight pixels. OK, it's going to be half of 16 pixels, but I'm going to keep it at one rem. Now, if I were to go back into my settings, so let's see, where is it? Settings and we'll go to font size, very large. And you can see that now not only has the font size increased, but also the, the border and the um, the padding has as well. You can see font size is now 24 pixels and the padding is 24 and then the border is 2.3 something pixels. OK, so it gives it gives the user that control. If we say very small, it's going to decrease all of that stuff, the font, the border and the padding. All right, let's put that back. If this stuff was set to pixels and it was all fixed, that wouldn't make any difference at all. All right, so it's really not that hard to understand. It's just relative to the HTML font size. OK, and one rem is equal to by default 16 pixels uh, unless you change it here or you change it in your browser settings or whatever. So now let's move on to M. Now M works the same way except it's not just relative it's not relative to the HTML, it's relative to its parent element. Now this paragraph has a um, a div with the class of box wrapped around it. So what I'm going to do here is let's say dot box and let's set the font size. Let's see. So we'll say it will set the font size to uh, let's say 30 pixels. All right. Now, if I save this, we're not going to see any difference because, again, rem is relative to the root HTML. But if I were to copy this and then we'll just comment that out and then we'll change this to M units. Okay, instead of rem and save. Now you can see that it's relative to box. It's relative to its parent element. If we look down here at the the um, the computed styles, you can see for border we have uh, three pixels for font size 30 for padding 30 because that's they're both set to one M. Now, if we didn't have a parent, OK, so if we get rid of this right here, this body, I'm sorry, box font size 30, if I comment that out and save, then it's going to work like rem. It's going to be relative to the HTML. If I were to set font size 10 pixels, you'll see that it'll change because this the HTML is, in fact, the the parent of the paragraph. OK. Um, now, if I go and I change my settings over here, let's first of all get rid of that and save so it's back to normal. And if I go to my settings and change to very large, you'll see that it'll also change here. Very small. All right. So you can still do that even with M's. Um, now, that won't work if I want to just go back to. OK, so it won't work if you're not to using the core HTML element. So now if I go very small, you'll see that didn't change. OK, it's not going to work if your parent element actually has a defined font size. OK, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so there's not much more to be said without overcomplicating it. That that's that's the basis of how M and Rem works. Rem is relative to the root element. M is relative to its parent element. OK, and it's always relative uh, to the font size. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment all of this out. And now we're going to talk about 
uh, VH and VW, which is viewport heights and, and viewport widths. So I've talked about this in a few videos before. I have the full screen uh, video background that I just did. Uh, also, I have a landing page with a full screen image. The, in those videos, I talked about VH and VW. So if you saw those, and you probably already know this stuff. But basically, if I set the box, okay, remember we have a, a div with a class of box, and we'll set the background to blue. All right, we'll save. And by default, it's just going to be, you know, just that div. Now let's set a height for this. And let's set it to 20 VH. All right, and we'll save. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take up uh, 20 viewport heights. So if we look at the height of the browser, right, um, no matter how small, no matter how maximized it is or whatever, you can think of it as 100 slices across. OK, and what we've set it to is 20 of those 100 slices. So you can see it takes up 20 percent of the height. If I were to set it to 50, you'll see that it takes up half of it. And, and this is no matter how how this is resized. If we go and we, we can actually close this out. If we resize it down to this, you'll see it's always going to be the same. It's always going to take up half. All right. Now for the full screen image landing page that I did in the video uh, landing page, we set this to 100 so that it was it would always cover, you know, 100 percent of the uh, of the height, no matter how how we resize this. Now, the space you're seeing on the sides here and at the top, this is from the padding and margin from the body. Also from the paragraph here, paragraphs by default, they have a margin of, I think it's 10 or five pixels uh, on the top and bottom. So to fix that, what I would do is add a reset. So we can say asterisk, which means every element on the page. We could just mar uh, zero out the margin padding like that and save. And now you'll see there's no spaces. Now, if we go and we add something below the box, remember the, the box is what has the VH100. If we were to add, let's say, an H1 under here, and we'll just say whatever, hello, and save, you'll see that no matter how we resize it, we still we don't see anything below the box, okay, until we scroll. If I scroll down, now we'll start to see the rest of the content. So this is how full screen landing pages are made. At least this is one way. This is the way that I suggest. All right, so that's VH. Um, and then we also have VW, which is viewport widths. Now, you don't need to use this as often because, as you can see, it goes all the way across. Um, it's a block level element. But uh, we could set width to, let's say, 50 VW. If we do that and save, you'll see that it'll take up half of the page. OK. Um, and if we set it to 100, it's going to go all the way across just like it was anyways. All right, guys, so hopefully this helped you understand a little bit about REM M and the viewport height and viewport width units. Um, now it's up to you what you want to do. If you if you still if you want to use fixed pixels or, or whatever, that's absolutely fine. It's all preference. Um, I'm not going to say there's a right or wrong way to do everything. But if you want your site to be the, the most responsive, it can be um, if you want it to if you want users to be able to control the overall scale of the site for readability, then I would suggest using REM units. All right. Um, you know, frameworks like Bootstrap 4, they moved from using fixed pixels to REM units uh, just to make things more responsive and more, more readable. All right, so that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you like this video. Please subscribe if you're not and if you feel like subscribing. And I will see you next time. Hey guys, if you've been watching my videos for a while and you really like what I do and I've helped you out a lot, consider becoming a patron. Even for $1 per month, it pushes me to keep bringing you guys the best content I possibly can. There's reward tiers for discounts, free Udemy courses, personal support, and more. So check out the Patreon link in the description below for more info.